I am dressed up for date night tonight. We decided to stay in to catch the season finale of Game of Thrones, where we find out what happens to the few remaining main characters who we've gotten to know over the past eight seasons. No spoilers, I promise, but if you are troubled by all the feels after last Sunday's episode, I highly recommend you look up online, I will link it below, the Spencer Kornhaber, I'm probably butchering his name, I apologize, but one of the writers at The Atlantic interviews Barry Strauss, who is a historian at Cornell, and through their discussion of historical figures and sieges throughout history, I feel that that new historicist reading of the episode helps me reconcile where the creators took the series last week. Although I sort of dread tonight's episode, I will be staying up late. If you're distraught over your no-buy year, Please hang around. I thought I would share my first thoughts on a capsule wardrobe. And the month of May, in some of the creative circles that I run in, the month of May is devoted to wearing clothing items, garments that you have actually made yourself. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around. <music> capsule wardrobe. There's some wonderful, wonderful YouTube creators who I will link down in the description box who, and it's not that I want to purge my closet and buy a whole new set of stuff that would go against my no-buy year, but as I go through the seasonal change, as Persephone emerges from Hades, there is a certain degree of excitement with casting off old garments and trying on new ones. Now, coincidentally, May is, in some of the creative circles that I run in, uh, May is also the month that seamstresses and tailors devote to wearing items that they have personally handmade. In other words, um, incorporating their own handmade clothing into their capsule wardrobes. So that's what I wanted to share with you this afternoon. I am wearing a couple of the pieces that I've pulled from my closet. Neither item is handmade, but they are the type of staple items that I am trying to pare my wardrobe down to. And I'm looking for items that are versatile, items that I can combine with two or three other garments in a small capsule in order to simplify the morning routine, in order to focus on wearing and enjoying those items that are of the highest quality and that I adore, wearing items that fit me well, items that flatter my figure type, items that are no-brainer professional or daytime looks for me. So what I'm wearing is a simple black linen shift dress, strapless, with a scarf. I just wanted to share with you some of the, my closet collection that I've actually handmade. And where possible, I will split screen and throw a link to the pattern up on the left. Now, due to the miracles of the internet. Oftentimes, if you're interested in this kind of thing, you can find video sources to show you just about anything you need to know in terms of troubleshooting exact patterns or exact techniques, garment construction techniques. So I'm by no means a seamstress. My seasonal preference in terms of fabrics in the spring, summer, absolutely linen, silk, natural fibers, cottons, jerseys, and that type of thing. Here's an example of a pattern that you can download over the internet. This is the Wixton tank top. It's a tiny pocket tee, and this is what I will be sewing next. Patterns are something that can be downloaded and pieced together with 
tape very easily. So there's a whole industry of indie designers, studios like Wixton, studios like Grainline, where individual designers have been, able, have been able to carve out a niche and reach a passionate audience with their creative designs. I will also link some of my favorites down below. The first outfit I would like to share with you is a Merchant and Mills shirt dress. Now this one is a bit moo moo like, frankly. I sewed it out of a pont cotton and it has a slightly different ticking that I use to line the back yoke. But this is a very comfortable, very work appropriate look for me. I can pair this with a pair of slide on mules or sandals with or without a heel and it's casual. I really like the yoke design and it's very, very comfortable. Also in that pattern is a dress with a fairly heavy pinstripe fabric that I actually do not wear out. It is lovely for summertime lounging around the house if I'm working, very, very comfortable. But this truly looks like a moo moo on me. I would have to have been thinking about ways I can tailor it so it perhaps would become a little more fitted in order for me to wear it out. But in its current state, because of the drape of the fabric, it's just too stiff. It's just not figure hugging enough for me to want to wear. It's a bit like wearing a potato sack. But I do. I did have fun making it and it helped me understand the pattern so that I could go in and deal with a more complicated fabric such as this pond. It is more difficult if you know anything about sewing to sew with cotton jersey. All right, my next outfit is a little skirt that I made in a, at the time it was called Craftsy, in a Craftsy class. I actually drafted this pattern. It is, fully lined, I apologize for the cheap hangers, fully lined, and I love this skirt. It hits above the knees. It's a modest enough mini skirt for me to wear to work. I can pair it, of course, with any tops, but this is a linen sweater that I knitted. And I like, with a look like this, I like to have a variety of textures. I adore this little t-shirt. It has a ruffle fabric detail that is just wonderful peeking out of this rather square neck tank top. So these, this can of course go with any number of bottoms and the skirt of course is suitable for any number of tops. Both of these are very, very versatile items. Next up is an Aster shirt. This is a button down that I sewed with a... Lawn is a drapey cotton fabric and this one is designed by Cotton and Steel. It is collarless, which frankly I believe makes it feel a bit too much like a nurse's uniform, but I do enjoy the shirt. This is the second look that I thought I would throw together with the same. This is actually what I wore to work today with the exception of the shoes. I had flat brown slip-on sandals with just about a one inch heel in, in my outfit today. Um, this is the Aster blouse from Colette and I am tucking it into a maxi length linen drawstring waisted skirt from Max Mara. I will link the maker below. Um, it is very airy, very comfortable. It is that kind of end of the semester vibe. We are nine days away from final exams. So I really appreciate having something breathable airy, non-restrictive to wear. So when I need to jump around and help students with their 20 time projects, I can do so. And without risk of breaking my neck because I'm hurtling computer cords in heels. These Sam Edelmans are comfortable and very stable, but I do feel that in the classroom, sometimes I'm just 
if there's a lot of movement, I'm certainly safer with, with just a one inch open toed sandal. And I'm just wearing it with a simple half tuck. The last outfit I would like to share with you is actually a store-bought silk skirt in a rather drab steel gray. It is, it has a slight flare. It fits me really well. I enjoy wearing silk and I'm going to pair that with this Grainline Studio Scout Tee shirt. Um, I love this pattern. I have made three versions of this pattern. This one is in a very heavy duty a uh, coarse burlap linen that I adore. It is the same kind of steel gray. I feel that the textures and the profiles, in other, other words, a drapey flowing silk skirt paired with this rather minimalist, te heavily textured scout t-shirt is a wonderful, wonderful combination and of course I could always have a pop of color with a handbag or with my shoes or even with a silk scarf tied around my neck. This is the Scout Tee by Grainline Studio in the coarse linen neutral color gray steel gray and I adore it with this midi length silk skirt which is almost like a circle skirt. It has a lot of natural movement. It catches the light and I really, to keep the look minimal and elegant and clean, I like to just simplify the accessories with a big high quality leather sack. This one I purchased many years ago from Sundance Catalog and I love it. And a piece of interesting jewelry at the neckline i do like the choker look with this simple clean round neckline and the shoes that i would pair this with would be the sam edelman open toe platform sandals which i love i got those last year at the nordstrom anniversary sale or a simple mule. Now these mules are from Amazon and they are very clean suede. They were very affordable. I do enjoy that they, because of the nude color, they, I do feel that they kind of have that barefoot vibe with the rest of this outfit. So I do enjoy that juxtaposition. Love that outfit get a lot of wear out of that. And here are two examples of other Scout t-shirts scout that I've made. This one has a little bit of an inverted pleat on the arm. Start with what I like about this edition. This edition I made out of a repurposed bass men's shirt. And this, while it buttons down the back, that is just the placket that I re recycled from the original shirt. This used to be the front. It currently is the back. The thing I don't like about this edition is I used a white liner at the sleeve and the neckline, which I would not do again. I prefer to have that not a visible design detail. But I do, and I was able to salvage the bottom of the shirt as well, so it has kind of a, this interesting design detail of an uneven join at the front and the back, which actually I think is rather cute and I like it. The final Grainline Scout tee that I made is starting to fray a little bit at the neckline. This sees much, much love. Again, this was also made out of a repurposed Madras shirt that probably was from Bass. Back in my college days, I really enjoyed these um, men's shirts and I adore this. It still has the pocket button on the back and you can see where there's slight discoloration from that pocket and this is always a conversation starter when I wear it in the classroom. I actually have some students who are wonderful seamstresses and it's been a an interesting thing to be able to open that type of creative conversation with students.
That concludes my quick tour through my Me Made May entries. I hope you enjoyed spending a little bit of time with me. I, If you also have ever created any of your own garments or have any favorites, please do comment below and I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Ciao!